joining. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And if any of you want access to this after um, today's presentation, happy to send it out. Um, let me just go presentation mode here. Give me one second. So before I kind of dive into career, I think it would be helpful to um, just introduce myself a little bit and talk about my journey here at Mercer. Um, well, actually, you know what, we'll, we'll start with about career because then I think that'll help contextualize kind of my career path here. Um, so some of you have probably been on some of these other calls. Some are hearing about Mercer for the first time, but just high level, we have kind of three different practice areas. So within Mercer, we have um, what we call career and then we have health and wealth. So the purpose of today's call is to really talk to you more about career. So this visual I think is great because it kind of highlights all the different work that we do, but very high level, you know, within career, we're really focused on the people um, of an organization. So that can be from a technology perspective. It could be from a how you pay your employees perspective. Um, it can be working with leaders in an organization. So there's lots of things that go on within career. Um, so there's not just one thing that we do. So if you look at this kind of web or what we call like a honeycomb, kind of shows how everything fits together. So we do things like, like I mentioned, um, compensation for both executives and non-executives. Um, we also do um, change management and employee communication. Um, we do things like um, career development and career pathways and, and the architecture behind that. Um, there's also, um, different types of analytics that we do. So around, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is very is a very hot topic these days. So um, looking at pay equity across organizations and internal movements from a mobility perspective. So uh, this is kind of the very high level view of this, and we can definitely dive into any of these further based on your questions and what you want to know more about. Um, but really all these things fit together to really service the employees of an organization. Um, so maybe just a little bit more about kind of like what this means and key challenges that we're seeing today. Um, so, you know, and, and, and I think the great thing about career is that, you know, a lot of the work that we do is influenced by our external environment. So think about kind of this first box here. So managing shifts in the workforce. So we're in a pandemic, right? Um, and, you know, flexible working or remote working has become something that companies are paying a lot more attention to. So within the career practice, you know, we would own work related to, um, you know, what those programs look like, how they're designed and implemented, um, et cetera. And then, you know, I won't touch on all of these, but just to kind of touch on a few highlights. So, um, there's something called an employee value proposition. So um, that's really, you know, what is the mission, vision, values behind why employees want to work at an organization? Um, and then, you know, that that's what drives em employees' engagement and then ultimately the success of the business. So, you know, amidst the pandemic and amidst kind of, you know, employees at the center of organizations, um, you know, it, it, this is a ultimate focus for a lot of companies and redefining what that looks like. So that would, if you think going back to the web, kind of goes back to um, communication and change management, but really some more higher level design thinking and, and strategic conversations with leaders. Um, other things that fall within career are HR technology. So, you know, whether you're a student or you are, um, you know, you've worked at prior companies, we all have systems that we log into to see our pay information or put our put in our performance goals and things like that. So within our space, we have different technologies and partners um, that we use to not only help manage that side of things, but also manage training and development or, um, you know, compensation data. So there's lots of different technologies that we use and, and products that we sell within career as well. Um, and then, you know, kind of touching on one or two more of these. So, um, you know, think, think about culture and compensation. So people, and then what motivates people, um, you know, definitely the EVP is a part of that, but also the, the ultimate thing that really drives people is their pay. 
So, you know, take an example where a company is going through a merger and acquisition, you have two different cultures, two different types of companies coming together, and we have to harmonize those different practices, whether it's around HR policies, whether it's around, you know, their different levels within an organization. So those are just a, a few kind of more detailed examples of work that happens in career that's kind of driven by external challenges um, that we're facing. And I think the message there is that's really constantly evolving um, based on kind of external factors in the market. So the last thing here that I think kind of um, helps shape the work that we do um, very high level is, you know, connecting um, the work we do on, on kind of three basic scales. So in a nutshell, you could say that Mercer between career and health is really focused on compensation and benefits, which are more of the contractual items, right? So really more of the, a tangible outcome, if you will. But then if you, if you think about what that connects to, it's really the experiential and emotional connections that um, employees have to organizations. So that really gets at their well-being, their careers, what motivates them, what keeps, what keeps their energy going in their day to day, and then really what's the overall organizational purpose and what connects employees to that purpose. So all of this is kind of um, a broader framework by which we operate in to ensure employees are constantly motivated, um, we're able to, or organizations are able to attract and retain the best talent and really sell themselves as an organization to their employees. So it all kind of goes back to their, their brand. Um, so all that being said, there's lots um, of different areas within career. Um, I'll kind of skip this one. So kind of with that, maybe I'll go back and with that context can talk about my journey within career a little bit and then open it up to the panelists to um, give a brief intro about themselves and then really have you all answer any questions that you might have. But um, to start out with a little bit about me, um, I've been with Mercer for over five years, um, but kind of starting from my, my whole journey, um, you know, I grew up in Texas and um, I went to Emory University. Um, and while I was at Emory, I studied in our business school doing consulting and marketing. And so ever since I was a junior in college, I've been with Mercer. Um, I started as an intern in our career practice in Atlanta and then ultimately accepted a full-time offer there. Um, and then since then, I've kind of been growing my career here at Mercer in a variety of ways. Um, so you can see kind of the, some of the unique opportunities that I've had here within career. But, um, you know, within the career practice, we have, um, you're able to work on different projects that um, you're not just necessarily working on one project. Um, and so on one of the projects I was working on, I got to travel abroad. Um, and I also got the opportunity to um, attend a training before I moved to New York officially to develop my project management skills. Um, and then ultimately um, I participated in um, one of our programs that we have here at Mercer, um, which is a cross office rotation program. So I was able to go for four months to New York um, to build my network, work with different people, work on different types of projects um, and ultimately decided to stay. So I've been in New York for about three years now um, and I've had several promotions since then, but really my focus now is um, working on larger scale projects that if you look at this web are kind of um, attached to multiple, multiple honeycombs, if you will, not just necessarily doing one thing um, and really developing from a project management perspective and coaching and mentoring younger resources, some of the some of the panelists on the, on the phone today, I've definitely um, worked with over the course of my career here. Um, and then maybe just a little bit too, just to paint the picture of Mercer as a company, um, some of the things I do just kind of outside of career as well. Um, I, I don't know if you all are familiar or if Will or others have throughout the course of these calls kind of talked to Mercer more broadly, but we do have something called um, business resource groups, which is kind of like our internal employee groups. So part of um, my involvement at Mercer is chairing one of those groups for the tri-state area. Um, so we call it, it's called our Rising Professionals Network. So outside of my career consulting work that I do, I also chair that group, which is really focused on developing um, 
events for all of Mercer um, related to personal and professional development. So we that can range um, from you know your basic networking event with senior leaders to doing um, we did a virtual um, colleague connect program where we connected colleagues in different lines of businesses and different levels with similar interests um, to kind of build a virtual mentorship program. Um, we've done happy hours, et cetera. So um, aside from my day-to-day -day work as a consultant um, in our career practice, that's, that's another thing that I um, am involved in within Mercer. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I don't wanna do all the talking here. So maybe before we kind of jump in, um, we can have each of the panelists kind of introduce themselves. I'll go by what's on my screen. Um, so um, let's see, maybe Emily, you wanna start? Sure, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Emily Patrizio. I am a senior analyst out of the Philadelphia office and I studied human resource management at Temple University, which is also in Philadelphia. Right now, I primarily work in human resource transformation and job architecture, um, but I also touch some communications work and change management. That would be my job to say who's next. Um, <laughs> Hanlu, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Han Lu. I am currently in Chicago because I'm from the Chicago office and it's lovely. And I graduated from Washington University in St. Louis in 2020 studying international affairs and organizational and strategic management. And at Mercer, I primarily work with um, career rewards, so mostly based with compensation. I'm also staffed on a couple projects with HR trans ah, sorry, HR transformation as well. But lovely to meet you all. And Tanner. Hey everyone, Tanner Smith here. Um, <clears throat> I'm a senior analyst out of the Atlanta office. I've been with Mercer for just over a year and a half. Um, and I graduated from University of South Carolina with a finance degree. Um, a lot of the work I do is centered around broad-based rewards, um, job, job architecture and career framework, and then um, something a little you know, niche uh, being sales compensation. Um, but yeah, I, I, love, I love working with the team, love working with Meredith. So uh, it's, it's a great company to join if you have the chance. And Dev. Hi, everyone. My name is Dev. Um, I'm also a senior analyst in the Philadelphia office. My name is Kevin. Um, but I'm in Dallas right now because I graduated from the University of Texas at Dallas. And I'll be moving to Philly next month. It's very excited. Um, in terms of what I do here, I've been working on a variety of projects from job architecture to performance management and then. Uh, Earlier, Meredith was talking about like that m and situation and harmonizing competition practices. That's probably my biggest project right now. Um, so yeah, I've been working on a lot of stuff that's been fun. And Claire. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Claire Hendy. I'm a senior analyst out of the Atlanta office. Um, I'm actually soon to transfer to the New York office in about a month. Um, following a little bit in uh, Meredith's footsteps there. Um, but I've been with Mercer for about two years now working, oh, sorry, I graduated from Vanderbilt University prior to that with a degree in economics. Um, and I work primarily in broad-based rewards and I'm sure that's a bit of a foreign term. Um, at Mercer, we typically split uh, executive rewards kind of into one bucket and then broad-based rewards, um, just kind of think of it as uh, you know, the rest of the employees. Um, so yeah, so a lot of uh, the analytical work associated with broad-based compensation, um, as well as the associated employee communications. Um, but I'm excited that you're here to join us, excited to answer some questions today. Uh, like Michaela said in the chat, um, participation will be key today. So we wanna hear from you and hear your questions. And Last but not least, Kevin, I don't see your video, but I see that you're on. Uh, I think my video is on. But... Okay, there you are. Now okay. I see you. 
Um, hi everyone, I'm Kevin. I went to Haverford College, which is a small school just outside of Philadelphia. Um, I'm a senior analyst at Mercer in the Philadelphia office with Emily and Dev. And I've been at Mercer for just over nine months now. And I primarily focus on executive compensation and broad-based rewards with a little bit of M&A and job architecture as well. Great, so I think that was all of our panelists. So really, I think the purpose from here on out is kind of to answer your questions and if there's an area, not necessarily a question, but you wanna hear more about HR transformation or what we said with rewards, you know, feel free to, this is a educational session for all of you as well. Um, so happy to just speak to an area further, answer any specific questions. Um, so I guess we'll open it up and um, feel free to use the chat to answer, to ask me questions and we'll, I'll help um, steer the panelists who can um, help us answer any of your questions. We'd love to and hear from don't you. Don't be so, shy. Yeah, yeah, don't be shy. We'd love to hear <laughs> from you. So if you do have a question, feel free to take yourself off mute and verbally ask your question. We'd love you to enable your camera if you're comfortable with that as well. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon to some of y'all. Uh, this is James Johnson. I'm a senior from UT Arlington Business Management. Uh, this is actually my third Mercer uh, panel this week, so I've been trying to find where I think I could fit, and I think this is definitely the area that's most attractive to me. It aligns with a lot of my coursework in organizational behavior, strategic management, compensation and rewards analysis. So my question is more of kind of day-to-day -day interactions, um, especially, I really love the business resource group. That was actually the first I've heard of it um, so far this week. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, how do you all stay connected, especially with COVID, not only with clients, but also with your other team members? Um, I know a lot of people are still working from home. Um, so what apps or what methods do you guys use to make sure that everybody stays uh, in contact? Thanks, James, and nice to meet you. Um, love to hear that career resonates with you. Um, great question because, and just to, before I pass it off to the panelists, you know, I myself work with many of the panelists on the phone and we're all in different offices and I can say that we are very well connected. So any takers from the panel on who wants to answer? If not, I'll, I'll pick on some people. How is raising her hand, take, take it away. <laughs> I don't know the protocol for this. I didn't want to jump in and, and interrupt. Someone. No, but yeah, no. So like Tanner, I also work with Meredith. And because we're in different offices, Teams has been really helpful, as well as, of course, email. But um, other ways to keep in contact with colleagues, like professionally, just, just the two for the most part. But um, I will say Teams is fantastic. And outside of work, like I have a couple colleagues that I just hang out with. Um, I consider them my friends outside of work. And like Meredith said, it's not about just the work that you do, but the people that you work with. And so especially starting remote, I think Kevin and I both started in January. It's definitely an adjustment, but I will say people reach out and you also have to take initiative to reach out, whether that's during the work day or grabbing coffee with someone or just keeping in contact with people that you've worked with in the past and aren't necessarily in the same office. Um, yeah, that's my experience so far. Anyone else want to add to Han Lu? Um, yeah, I, I was just going to say that I, uh, we don't really have a choice but to stay connected. So whether I like it or not, I got to talk to Meredith all the time. Um, but yeah, I, I'd, I'd echo that. <laughs> I'd, I'd echo that that sentiment. Um, it's 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 not. I don't think it's very difficult once you're working with people day to day. Um, even if your project teams may change, uh, I think like even you know cross cross offices. So Atlanta to to New York, Philly to Chicago, wherever. Um, we we work all around the country with with people. So I think it. It kind of takes care of itself, at least, at least from my view. And I would add, Tanner, that you know, because we really work with so many different teams, um, it really doesn't feel like it's a challenge to be staying connected because you know, you're I mean, you're on multiple projects at one time. And so you're talking to multiple groups of people and 
you know, bringing insights from one project to another and just constantly staying connected, even though we're all virtual. Thank you, everyone. That's great to hear. What other questions or things you want to know more about from the group? Hey, um, I have a question. Yeah, so uh, hi everyone, I'm Justin. I'm currently a finance major at uh, the University of California. I'm much like what James, this is probably also like my third uh, uh, meeting with Mercer uh, this week. Um, during my job search, like one of the things I'm searching for is a job where like, you know, I can be part of this to a positive impact, whether it be, you know, helping, you know, in the way of the, uh, the business, like, you know, helping it improve its processes or something like that. So I'm curious for any of the panelists who want to answer um, in quantifiable terms, like what's this one really cool way that you've seen your work make a sort of an, an impact on the, you know, on the way your clients do business or any of that, as far as you're allowed to talk about, you know, uh, some of your projects. Yeah, no, that's a great question. We can definitely speak to examples. We won't say any client names, but um, I'll actually just let the panelists kind of take themselves off mute as, and feel free to answer as, as you wish. But maybe we can hear from some of the ones that haven't spoken yet. I think the work that like I've done for a human resources transformation, you get to see like a big change from start to finish. Um, one of my clients without like talking about names um, is a hospital. And so basically like they've had some bad interactions between like nursing and management and like the way their HR services are delivered to like customers or like employees. Um, so just like redesigning those processes and making recommendations that are like pretty concrete and like actually show a change can be interesting. For a couple of my projects, we've done um, raise to minimum or just raising minimum wage. And so especially for hourly workers, you can see the impact that it will have on their take home pay, right? Like going from $8 an hour to $15 an hour, like that's such a huge difference. And just being on the cost side of things and seeing like the impact that it can make in one year, two years, three years, however long it takes like that is pretty rewarding and that's just like one kind of work right that's just raising to the minimum wage you're raising um someone's hourly pay so that's been pretty cool uh, thank you Emily. yeah and maybe just to kind of summarize everything from the panel like really what we do affects employees of an organization so I think it becomes very personal, right? Uh, personal in a good way. Like we're able to connect the work that we do because we ourselves are employees. So we can kind of relate our own experiences to the work that we're doing as well. Um, so thanks, great question. Um, other other questions? Yeah, Hi. Michael, go ahead. Oh, sorry. sorry, Julia, we'll come to you next. I saw Michael raise his hand. Hi, um, I'm Michael Corteze. I'm a senior finance student at uh, UCF, uh, University of Central Florida. I was uh, interested to hear from some of the uh, analysts, like what a day-to-day -day looks like in terms of like tasks. And I know Tanner mentioned that he does uh, a more niche sales compensation, he said, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about that as well. Yeah, so I think... Uh... From, from an analyst perspective, it's very much like you're, you're doing analytics, you're preparing um, deliverables to then send on further up the chain within each project team. Um, so you're really in the weeds with Excel, PowerPoint, um, and any other like internal systems that we have, um, pulling, analyzing data, and then aggregating that and you know, making reports. Um, as far as sales comp goes, it's, it's really cool because uh, the reason why I like it is you kind of get a look at the actual business and the strategy behind the business. Um, and you kind of have to marry like compensation and our best practices from that perspective with their strategy, 
what industry they sit in. And, and it becomes very specific to like the business. Whereas um, I've noticed with some of the work we do, you don't necessarily get that purview um, into like actually how these companies make money. Um, so that's one thing that I find really interesting with that. But as far as analyst work goes, um, anybody else have anything? Yeah, I would say that it's very dependent. Something you're going to hear a lot is like, it depends. And I feel like this is one of those situations. It depends on like the projects you're on. It depends on, um, you know, the people that you work with. Because sometimes teams will want to have like set up a lot of meetings with the client. And like, you know, you might like for me, for example, on Tuesdays, a lot of times I'm filled with like client meetings. And then Wednesday is like when I kind of debrief that and like, work on updating things. So sometimes you might be like spending a day just like working in Excel and then like going through the analysis, going through the numbers. Sometimes you might be uh, talking to your team internally about what the best way to present something on a slide is. Um, and then obviously sometimes you're in client meetings. So I think one of the nice things about this job is that it is pretty different on like a day-to-day -day, on a weekly basis. Um, but yeah, like Tanner said, a lot of the tools that we use are Excel, PowerPoint, and then like our internal data analytics stuff. Awesome, thank you guys. And Julia, I saw you had a question, so we'll come to you next. Yes, thank you. Hi guys, um, my name is Julia. I'm a junior at the University of Michigan studying organizational studies, um, which is this fun combination of psychology, sociology, and economics. Um, and I just had some questions about what job architecture is. Um, so if anyone who's doing that, if, could you guys tell me a little bit what it, about what it was, how you got there, and then what Mercer does well with it and where Mercer's growing with it? Thanks. Loaded question, but a great one. I love it. Um, who wants to take that one? Um, I can touch on it a little bit. I Yeah, go for it. So job architecture is defining the career framework for an organization. So you're defining like your job families, which would be like human resources, for example, and then a subfamily. So like compensation, benefits, HR operations, like all those different subsets. Um, and then on the other side of that, you're gonna define career streams and career levels. So for example, a career stream would be like an executive, a manager, a professional, or like a support employee. Whereas career level would be, how do you move up in the organization? Like basically think of it in terms of like a promotion. So like if I came in as like a professional level one, when I was promoted to senior analyst, like you would go on those steps. Um, but it's really interesting. So then you look at the employees and the jobs for a different clients and you map that into what you want the future state to look like based on like market benchmarks um, and things like that. So it's, it's really interesting work. I like it. It's very database, but at the same time, you have to be creative and kind of apply that to different situations and like what would work best for that specific client. Um, in terms of what we do well, we have like a big database of jobs that we can match to in terms of like codes or like pre-existing definitions for families or subfamilies that we can kind of cater to our needs. But for growth, I was actually just on a call before this. Um, we're kind of, we have these things called specializations um, to, so if like you're in application development and IT, like what kind of apps are you building? And that's something that for my specific client, at least we're looking to build out a little bit more as we go forward and like define that a little more clearly. So there's a lot you can do with it. And maybe just to build off of that really quickly, because some of the um, panelists on the phone might not even know about this, but I think just with job architecture and with other kind of areas of work too, we're really trying to leverage technology as much as we can to automate or kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like a go-to tool that is kind of like a lift and shift for client. 
um, you know, I think on one end of the spectrum, we have, they kind of want a standard model. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we do very, very hands-on projects where, um, you know, it's very customized and that would not necessarily be where a standardized technology tool would be pop, would be the most viable solution. So if you think about the broad spectrum of services, we're really trying to develop AI tools that kind of help clients that maybe are smaller or don't need something as customized to, you know, put, um, bring that to market. And that's not just for job architecture, that's for um, a lot of the other areas of work that we have as well. That's really cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I can tell all you guys about it after. Um, <laughs> let's go to Charlotte. I see you're raising your hand. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Charlotte Morelli. I'm a senior at Tulane University down in New Orleans, and I'm studying economics and psychology, so very similar to what Julia is studying at Michigan. So I'm curious the extent to which work as an entry level analyst is external client facing versus internal, just kind of the balance of that, if anyone would want to answer that. Sure, I can take that one. Um, I think, so first of all, as entry level, like from the beginning, you will always be client facing, like pretty much from the first project on, you're gonna be included on client meetings um, and all like correspondence, like email, like workshops, just regular status checks, all of that. The difference I think is how, how involved you are. So it's not, it's not gonna be a situation of you're gonna be the one presenting everything during a client meeting. You're not gonna be like the main point of contact, right? Like the, the associates and the principals above you are gonna be the ones who are doing most of that. So sometimes you might be there just like sort of listen and chime in if you have something to say, take notes, things like that. Um, but yeah, from the beginning, you will be client facing. And then if you are like interested in presenting or if you want to, speak out more to the client and that's like a discussion you can have with your team. Um, and from my experience, people have been really accommodating about that. So if you say like, hey, I want to present this slide or hey, could I talk about this? Then like you review it internally on the next call and you can present that for that. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo that. Um, I mean, as, as an, even as an intern, I was presenting at client meetings, which I don't know if necessarily is our best practice, but the senior level person trusted me and I said I wanted the opportunity just like Dev said. Um, so yeah, it's really much, uh, it's pretty much like you can choose your level of involvement to a degree and, and if you want to have more, more exposure in that area then people usually will, will accommodate. Thank you, I appreciate that. And I also like that just having the balance of like working with people and also working with numbers and doing the analytics. Yeah, and maybe just to summarize that question, we, then we can move on. You know, I think Mercer as a whole, track everyone, we're very like matrixed flat organization. Like everyone plays a role on different projects. So, you know, whether I'm the project manager or the analyst on the on the project, you know, everyone plays a role, right? Like I'm not as close to the data or the details, so I'll lean on the senior analysts or analysts um, to you know be that voice on calls. So I think even from the get go, like you have a very important role and you interface with the client and obviously you play a role on the internal team as well. Um, let's go to Crystal. Hi everyone, thank you for doing this panel today. My name is Crystal Hughes. I'm a senior at Rice University in Houston studying sport management and psychology. And just from hearing some of your backgrounds and majors, I'm curious to hear um, what some things that you learned on the job were and what support that you had getting over that learning curve? Any takers from the panel? I was going to say, I can, I can jump in. Um, so I think uh, Quite possibly my favorite part about Mercer is how collaborative we are, especially amongst the lower levels of the organization. So um, in any scenario, if there's a project that I haven't worked on or I don't, I'm not super familiar with the, the content around this, somebody has done it before 
um, and, and they can, you know, share with me what they've done, uh, you know, and, and everybody will take the time to teach you, um, which, which I think is the best part because especially coming in as an intern um, or, or an analyst, you don't know much about what we do. Like it's very, it's very hard to, uh, hard to, you know, grasp when, when you're outside, sitting outside the organization, once you get in, it, it makes it a lot easier because people are so collaborative and, and everybody shares and we all help each other out, which, which is probably my favorite part. Yeah, and just to echo Tanner's point, the project that I'm working with um, Meredith on, I had only done a couple of these projects before and she actually pointed me to Tanner. So Tanner, lead by <laughs> like action, like I reached out to him for help and he was incredibly helpful and incredibly patient. Um, but yeah, I think especially with more of like a liberal arts background with my degree in international affairs, but also in business, I think that at least starting work, like we had a nationwide training when we first started because we started remote in 2021 of January. So that was really helpful because you aren't just learning with the people in your office, you're learning like with people from everywhere. And so you have like already an expanded network of people that you can say like, hey, like, did you understand this training? Can you explain this to me? And especially in Chicago and any up, like all the other offices that I've talk to and have friends and like it's exactly like Tanner said it's very collaborative it's very friendly like if you need help raise your hand ask a question and someone will be there to help you and guide you um, whether they're another analyst whether they're associate even if they are a principal or partner so that's definitely something that I think the learning curve is still going to be alert like you're still going to have to learn but you'll have a lot of support along the way. And to add on to that, I think that, um, you know, particularly when you're working on a new project um, with a principal or partner that you haven't worked for before, as long as you're, you know, kind of set expectations and let them know that this is something you're learning or haven't done before, they're not going to expect you to be perfect the first time around. I mean, like, there is, you know, an understood level of learning and, you know, as long as you pay attention to the details and don't make the same mistakes twice, you know, kind of all the things that you typically hear, I think, you know, you'll find a path to success. There are the resources to do it. Awesome. Thank you for those insights. And next, I'm actually going to go to Kelly. I know you said you weren't able to be on, um, on sound, but your question was talking more about um, well, you're graduating in December and you're curious about the consulting analyst position specifically in digital transformation. Um, so I, I don't know if any of the senior or any of the panelists on the phone can talk to that. Um, I, I think you might have been referring to HR transformation, which includes digital. So maybe if any of the panelists have experience there, they can speak to that. I myself don't have direct experience, but if the panels can't speak to it, I can talk to it at a high level. Okay, well, maybe I can just, and maybe you can follow up with one of us afterwards and we can make sure that we answer your question, but really digital transformation can look like a couple different things. I mean, typically it's technology. We have a whole Mercer digital group that I believe sits outside of career, but partners very closely with career, um, but typically, this would be kind of what I touched on before um, within HR. So our digital practice is really focused on implementing HR technologies. Um, so I don't know if any of you are familiar with, um, you know, maybe if you're a university student who use Oracle or PeopleSoft to go on and access different information. So it's similar to that, but it's called Workday. Um, but then within, and so in the digital practice, we do implementation of that technology. But then broader HR transformation would be, well, as an example, how is this technology going to transform the way we do work at HR and what's the impact on our different programs? And so really designing those different programs, think about performance management or talent acquisition, recruitment, and how that all flows through the system rather than just the implementation of the system with the requirements and things like that itself. So um, I, 
hopefully that answers your question. I know you can't be on um, sound, but I'm happy to chat with you offline further about that and connect you with some other people in that in that um, practice. Um, so why don't we go to, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Eileen, Eileen? Aileen. It's okay. Aileen, all right. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Aileen. Uh, I'm a third year undergrad at UC Berkeley um, studying business. And I was really interested to hear some of the panelists touch upon like the sub practices uh, that they get to focus on within like the career practice at Mercer. So my question was going to be, how does uh, an analyst at Mercer get to really solidify where they're going to be focusing in? Um, is that something like they get to like state and choose or is it more just based on uh, timings of like project transitions and it, it just kind of the course of the work it, it doesn't have to be like um they're not like you know attached to that title great question any any takers uh, i could jump in on that um i think definitely one of the great things about mercer and being part of the career team is that when you first join it's not like you get siloed into any one specific sub function so one of the first conversations i've had I had with my people manager was kind of expressing, you know, what I think I would be interested in. So I expressed interest in like compensation, executive compensation, broad based awards, et cetera. So I've done a lot of those projects. Um, but the great thing is I've been able to do a lot of projects outside of compensation as well. And as long as you have a conversation with your people manager about, you know, what you might be interested in doing, I think the staffing managers really try their best to get you staffed on things that you would want to do. So recently I said, you know, for example, uh, I would want to try some job architecture, which is something I've never done before. And within like two weeks, I got staffed on my first job architecture project, which was really great. And to kind of answer your question about, you know, how do you solidify sort of what you want to do? Um, definitely, I think at the analyst level, you really, uh, you might solidify yourself, but I think it's good to keep your mind open because there's so many different things and practices at Mercer but definitely you know as long as you express if you have a specific interest and you keep doing those projects chances are you'll do good work and then you know the project managers will keep requesting you to do those types of projects again and again so whether you have a specific interest or you just want to try you know everything within Mercer career I think there's always an option for you. Yeah, I would I would agree with Kevin. Um, the way I like to think about it is like a choose your own adventure book. Um, so you can kind of direct your path with with where you want to go. Um, obviously, keeping in mind to, you know, have an open mind and be willing to take on things you weren't necessarily interested in at the start, um, especially at the analyst level, like the more things you touch, the more you'll learn. Um, but yeah, I definitely think like, if there's something you're interested in and you make that apparent with uh, your staffing manager, your people manager, your office leader, um, they'll definitely um, acquiesce and, and put the effort in to, to help you uh, get knowledge in that area. And this is kind of a little bit tangential, but I feel like Mercer does a really good job of like on firm wide calls, presenting case studies, really diving into some of the different practice areas. So it gives you a bit of a flavor of, you know, maybe something that you wouldn't have expected to see. And for example, um, HR transformation and kind of makes you, cons might make you consider getting involved in an area that you hadn't previously had exposure to. All right, I know James and Justin already asked a question, so I'll come back to you, but are there any others that um, who didn't get the chance to ask a question that, that want to um, before we kind of circle back to those two? And feel free to just unmute as well. Okay, then James, back to you. Thanks, Meredith. Hey guys, it's James again. Um, Meredith, I recall you bringing up uh, a topic that um, you guys work on, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. And 
I was going to ask, uh, like, if there was a specific team involved with that or how you get involved with that. But I think Kevin and Tanner's answer to Aline's question kind of answered that for me. But could you give me like an example of, of a case or a project that you would work on in kind of involving um, the overall topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion? Yeah, um, so maybe I'll take that one. Um, so, I, I mean, this is really a real-time evolving practice for us. Um, it could be as simple as defining the, not, not that it's simple, but um, going into an organization, understanding the current DEI landscape. So that would look like um, uh, like interviewing leaders to understand what their goals are and then um, you know, developing a DEI strategy. Um, but I'm actually, we're working on a multi-million dollar project proposal right now that's really looking at DEI from end to end. So think about diagnostic, um, you know, strategic understanding of what their goals are, but then looking at the um, workforce and um, doing a workforce analysis um, with our workforce analytics team around the current landscape of DEI and identifying gaps. Um, there's other, so this is actually Mercer wide, not even just career. So then on the benefit side, like how are they offering diverse benefits for different um, types of groups? Um, and then ultimately, um, and really in the, in the wealth practice too, um, I'm probably butchering what that actually looks like in practice because I'm not the expert there, but really total end-to-end -end DEI like overhaul. So there's also all the policies around DEI and any HR policies that they have to change. What does that look like in different locations? And, um, and then really the change management and communication of their DEI strategy, their go forward path, the three to five year roadmap and all the programs and policy changes that come with it. Um, and so I, I think that actually speaks to kind of where um, Mercer's moving to as an overall organization, really selling ourselves as a, a um, collaborative, not just within career, but cross practice. You know, I think um, as you progress in your career, you get those kinds of opportunities to work on the more complex cross cutting projects um, that are either multiple work stream or kind of combine health, wealth and career. So I think that's actually kind of as we near the end of the call, a good example of on the DEI space, you know, really breaking boundaries with projects like that, that are um, really becoming more um, forefront for us as a, as a business differentiator, but then also being able to work cross practice and, and um, you know, cross teams, if you will. So hopefully that answers your question. And sorry, I'm stealing the thunder from the panelists, but if anyone else has had DEI um, experiences that wants to add to what I just said, feel free. Yeah, that was a great answer, um, especially with the project. I love that you shared that with me. That's something I would love to be a part of. I have a background in social work, so it's definitely a passion of mine, and not only just the DEI aspect, but also the interdisciplinary uh, co collaboration between different units of Mercer is really exciting. So thank you for e explaining all that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to jump to, I know we only have five minutes, so I'm just, I'm going to jump to Lucy since I know you haven't had the chance to ask a question yet. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm Lucy, I'm a senior at the University of Michigan. Um, I'm really interested in health and wellness and employee benefits. Um, so I've previously worked in like more of an internal facing role where their own wellness team kind of worked for that company. But I'm curious, like, what does the work look like with benefits when you're consulting in like the more external role, like looking into other companies? Um, uh, like, what kind of work do you guys do? And I'm not sure if anyone has on this call has specific experience in the wellness space. But if someone does, I'd be curious to hear what that kind of work looks like day to day. So just to really quickly so great question um career typically wouldn't necessarily own what you're talking about as it relates to wellness so we actually do have health wellness consultants in our benefits practice well i don't know if the call for that has happened already or maybe we can share the recording with her um yeah absolutely we uh we actually had a health call this past monday on the 13th but we will be circling back to our health and benefits business on october 4th um, I'm going to drop my contact information in the chat. So, you know, if you would like a calendar of, of the ongoing events, feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to 
provide that information. But again, we will be circling back to our health and benefits group on October 4th. Thank you, really appreciate that. Yeah, but really quickly to answer your question, because I have a, a background in wellness with my um, education at Emory. So we do have outside of like your typical benefits and evaluation of benefits and program design, we do have um, wellness consultants. It's a smaller practice area, um, but they work with vendors and wellness platforms to kind of help shape those programs for your company. So probably if, my, if I had to guess, it's probably a growing area. Um, for us, just in light of kind of um, the focus on that these days. But yeah, definitely reach out to Will and he can connect you with the right people. Yeah, it looks like Michaela right, did add the, she added the link in the chat for the remaining sessions. Oh, so if anyone, you know, wants direct information on some of those upcoming sessions, feel free to check that out. All right, so we probably have time for the last two questions. So Justin, I'll turn it back to you to, to ask your other question. Hi everyone. Um, so a lot of you have mentioned working with technology in, in your jobs, you know, whether it be to HR technology, AI, or even you know, Oracle. So uh, I'm just curious for any of the panelists, um, what are some of the most valuable technical skills you've developed, you know, during your time working at Mercer? Excel and PowerPoint. If you know those, you're gold. Plain and simple, huh? <laughs> Anyone else want to answer that? I'm, I'm not sure if this entirely answers, but I was just going to say like project management as a skill is paramount um, and you'll use it all day, every day. Yeah, and maybe just to, I'm again, I'm not trying to steal the thunder, but I mean, there are, Mercer techno technology tools that we use to help us do the work. Um, and some of them I talked about before. So you're talking with the, kind of the consultants, which are the externally facing um, and, you know, uh, doing all the consulting work. But within career, we also have like a products group. So they help um, manage and sell all of our products. So sometimes we have clients that have a Mercer product or purchase it, and then we work with them to help. I don't want to say implement it, but leverage it in our projects. So aside from like your typical PowerPoint and Excel, there are specific Mercer technology tools that we use to help us um, execute the work. Uh, thank you, Meredith. And Charlotte, we'll wrap it up with you. Hi again, thank you. So this might be more of a question for HR, but I'm curious about um, what the recruiting process looks like. And additionally, do you apply specifically to career health or wealth or sort of to all of them? And do you, are you able to rotate among those three areas? We are looking for students to identify the opportunities based upon their interests. Okay, um, with our various different lines of business, we do have you know, each one of those groups have, are specialists within their, their own area. And so we are, are, you know, the purpose of some of these conversations are to give you um, just general information about the business itself so that it can help drive you to the right opportunity that's aligned to your overall arching goals of your interest. And so we, we are hopeful that these sessions um, will help identify those specific areas um, because again, It's not that you can't, but again, the question may come up on a call. Um, if you were to apply to various different groups, where does your interest lie? Um, and so just kind of keep that in mind. You know, the, the uh, applications are currently posted on Handshake. And so majority of the applications will be found through your university's platform. Um, positions are also posted online. And so if you want additional information about that, feel free to reach out to me uh, directly. I'll be more than happy to kind of walk you through you know, those links and where to apply and uh, continue dialogue around your own personal interest and what business may be best suited for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, I mean, I think that puts us right at time. Um, really appreciate all the great questions today. Um, feel free to reach out to Will, Michaela, or anyone else on the phone. 
Um, you, I think you should all have our emails just based on the, the invite. So feel free to reach out with any other questions you have about specific areas career uh, within career and any specific recruiting questions you can reach out to Will and Michaela. Um, and thank you everyone for joining and have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone. Have a good, have a good day. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.